This is a case where Rishi Sunak is steering his boat between Scylla and Charybdis, and all hell is breaking loose. Uh, on the one hand, he's got um, Dominic Raab, or rather he's not got Dominic Raab now. We cheer. On the other hand, he's got Simon Case, or rather Simon Case is facing a... Uh, a, a case, a, um, he's being sued for harassment, uh, for direct discrimination uh, on grounds of sex and um, gender, sex, no, sex and race, sorry, let me be specific, sex and race. And then he's also got the case of Richard Sharp, Richard Sharp, uh, who faces his own examination. There's a report due. Uh, he's already received the allegations earlier this month, the specific allegations that Adam uh, Heppenstall KC is reviewing and Adam Heppenstall will be issuing his final report in the next few days. Uh, of course, Richard Sharp has challenged this in much the same way as... Um, Dominic Raab has challenged the uh, final report by Tolly KC. And Raab's, uh, Raab may have resigned, but he's resigned with uh, the bad grace that one expected. Sharp may well do the same sort of thing. Sharp was made chairman, if you remember, by the, in the, uh, of the BBC in 2021. And uh, he had been part of an arrangement to produce £800,000 as a loan for Johnson to facilitate a loan, I think was the expression which was used at the time, uh, in the immediate period preceding his appointment as BBC chairman. And the significant issue was that he didn't declare this to the DCMS committee or to those managing his appointment. And this has been judged already to have been a significant error of judgment. So he claims that he raised the issue of the loan with Simon Case, Simon Case, the cabinet secretary. Well, of course, Simon Case is also under investigation at the moment. He faces his own investigation, the cabinet secretary. Um, he said that this was an oversight, not a serious Omission, he's speaking about Richard Sharp. It's so difficult to know who one's speaking about, when one's speaking about a failure in high office, because almost everybody in high office at the moment is being investigated for one thing or another. But in the case of Richard Sharp, it's an oversight that betrays a casual relationship with honest diligence. And that is what, as BBC chairman... He is there to oversee and promote himself. He has perhaps been caught up in the Boris Circus, but he's caught up in the Boris Circus because he seems to share the Boris morality of bluster that worked very well for Boris for a while, but look where Boris is now. He's no longer Prime Minister. And I think there's going to be a... I think what we're seeing is the turnaround of the moral pendulum, the swinging back of the moral pendulum away from uh, the bluster that led to Brexit back towards a centre position. And I think it's going to take in a lot of people, not only from the Conservative Party, but from the Labour Party, the SNP. We're seeing so many individuals questioned about their behaviour. And why is that? Because like bullying, this moral, this casual relationship with honesty is part of a group thing. It's not about individuals. It manifests in individuals, individuals who do it particularly um, noticeably, who are, who draw attention to themselves in some way. But that casual relationship with the truth is 
something that a society tolerates. And if a society doesn't tolerate it, then it doesn't happen. And our society has tolerated, has egged on, has encouraged, has abetted, um, has facilitated, has enabled these people to get away with their curious relationship with honesty, their curious relationship with authority, their curious relationship with morality, and with um, basic good practice. This is why we are seeing people called out for bullying. This is why we are seeing people called out for dishonest practice. And they're standing up and they're thinking, well, why am I so different? And I'm afraid they're quite right. Why are they so different? Well, maybe they were a little bolder. Maybe they were the ones who drew attention to themselves because this is a disease which runs through our system. And we see it every day if we look. Particularly, we see it in those places where authority is writ large, particularly in politics, in schools, in churches. Wherever authority is used to control people, we see uh, this level of abuse because that abuse has been tolerated for too long. We need to get back to some sort of basics and we need to get back to an understanding that what we say is what we mean. And this cultural phenomenon, which I first picked up around about 2010, where people say yes when they mean no, this needs to change as well, because this is part of it. Why should we all be in on some sort of joke that what I say or what I'm being told is not what the person means. Either say what you mean or be quiet. I'm so tired of trying to second guess what is meant when somebody says something. And as for people who don't have the courtesy, the honour to do what they say they're going to do, because they assume we all know that they meant to do something else entirely or come up with some sort of bluster when they're challenged this needs to change if we're going to make a go of a post-Brexit society we need to make a go of a society which can be trusted because who would do trade with us if our word means nothing